perilous tension building in the world right now. Climate solutions are scaling, but the bad stuff isn't really going away. Will climate solutions overtake our carbon intensive sectors in time, or will we just end up being additive to the global rise of greenhouse gases? We have a lot to do with that outcome, and we can't let the road to climate hell be paved with our good intentions. Climate solutions cannot be just another reason for more growth, more capitalism. We can have all the climate solutions, products, and technologies in the world, but they won't solve the problem unless and until they displace the industries that are killing us. Now look, I am all for climate solutions. I work for Project Drawdown. My entire organization is built on communicating about climate solutions to the world. We help show the world that reducing our food waste is a climate solution. Eating more plants and less meat is a climate solution, and so are smart thermostats, seaweed cultivation, walkable cities are climate solutions, improved rice production is a climate solution, mass transit, and of course wind, solar, and many others. And there's this sort of unsaid hypothesis in the climate solution space that when climate solutions ventures start to scale, it means the bad stuff will just sort of go away. Well, guess what? In many sectors, that is just not what's happening. It's like you're having a party at your house, right? And it's getting late, you're, but your friends are still out back, and you're trying to just get everybody to go home. Well, you can't just open the front door and expect that everybody's going to walk out. You also have to close the back door, which is kind of rude. But in climate solutions, we need to, just op we need to open the front door and close the back door to the things that are no longer working. So here are three climate solutions as examples. First, in the transportation sector, we consider carpooling to be a climate solution. But do you think that the existence of ride-sharing companies like Uber, Lyft, and many others have actually contributed to a reduction in greenhouse gases? They haven't. A recent study out of Car Carnegie Mellon and several others figures that on a per-trip basis, greenhouse gas emissions from an Uber, a Lyft, or another ride-share are on average 20% higher than if you were to simply drive your own car. What about business travel? Do you think that the existence of technologies like Zoom or Microsoft Teams have actually led to a reduction in business travel? It hasn't. Even though, even though virtual meetings have become the norm, they have not displaced business travel. Business travel is right back up to where it was before the pandemic, but now we also have emissions from all that video streaming. What about plant-rich diets as a climate solution? Do you think that the existence of alternative meat companies or plant-based meat companies has actually led to a reduction in beef consumption? It hasn't. So far, studies show that they're actually just additive to the long menu of options that we consumers have at our fingertips. So we now know, because we've run the experiment, that having the climate solutions alone does not solve the problem. Even the wildly successful startups, even the unicorns, by and large, have not displaced the status quo. Now, we need all of these innovations. We need the startups and the big ideas. But what our wheel of climate solutions doesn't show you is what needs to stop. We need more e-bike startups, but we also need less personally owned vehicles. We need more carbon removal technology, but we also need to stop spewing shit into the atmosphere. We need more renewable energy startups, but we need an end to fossil fuels. So the hard truth. So the hard truth is that for entire businesses and industries, that means lights out. These sectors need to make a dramatic, urgent pivot or be phased out entirely. Now you could say, let's let the market sort itself out, right? We don't have time for the market to sort itself out. We can't just wait and hope that climate solutions are going to scale in the world and these technologies will win, because time is the most important variable when it comes to climate change. Take a look at this graphic. This red line shows the greenhouse gas emissions that are churning into our atmosphere, up and up. And today we are at that red circle a turning point where we must dramatically reduce the greenhouse gases that we're putting into the atmosphere. And this, red, this yellow circle is where we make this dramatic pivot. From now until 2030, we need to cut our emissions in half. We don't have time to be neutral. Now look, 
I am not anti-capitalist, at least not on the stage today. I don't, think, I don't think that we can complete a socialist revolution and then solve climate change in the next six years. So for at least the next six years, I'm going to be the best goddamn operator inside the capitalist system that I can possibly be. I want to exploit. <laughs> I want to exploit capitalism for every one of its features that can help us stabilize the climate. So how do we use the tools of capitalism to put an end to what is not working and to build the big things that we need to build in the next six years? Here are three ideas. First, our climate solutions ventures need to be much more tactical. What do I mean by that? Well, our new measure of success needs to not just be about profit, but also about how much our new technologies are displacing its carbon-intensive alternatives. So if I'm Zoom, for example, I have my target over the airline industry. I want to force a reckoning with our unsustainable business travel. So my measure of success, if I'm that company, is not just about profit. It's about how many fewer flights were taken. And if that's my measure of success, then success for me as a business means success for the world. Second. Workers should not pay the price for their company's poor decisions. We all know those industries that need to be displaced and, and put out of business. Well, those workers shouldn't pay the price. So poach their workers. Hire up their workers from those sectors that you're out to replace. Train them up on the technologies of the future. Those workers deserve to be employed in a sector that's not going to disappear in 10 years, which cannot be true of carbon-intensive sectors. If we're going to have a future on this planet, those industries need to go away, and those workers need to be transitioned, and we can help accelerate that shift. And third, get off the sidelines when it comes to policy advocacy. Let's be vocal about our businesses' support for the policies that will make it easier for climate tech businesses to scale and harder for carbon-intensive businesses to scale. Nothing should keep us from taking a side when the stakes are so high and it's so relevant to our businesses. So if I'm a sustainable ag startup, for example, I want it to be much more difficult for a large food conglomerate to keep continue with their extractive practices. And I'm going to get active on any policy that is going to make that so. And that's just a few ideas. But when we think more tactically, instead of staying on the sidelines, we have the unique ability to infiltrate the system and use every bit of capitalism's power to do the big things that need to get done. Every bit of access, every bit of influence matters. At this late date in the climate crisis, no one person in this room has the right to remain neutral. We need to become the best operators we can within this system to bring into being the future that is still possible and to leave in the past the industries that cannot be part of that future. It's time to stop being timid and stop acting as though taking a position is only for activists and not for businesses. We all need to be activists now, in the boardroom, in our team meetings, in city councils, on the trading floor, everywhere. We no longer have time to just be for climate solutions. We must also be vehemently and actively against their carbon-intensive alternatives. Thank you.